In this lesson, we'll take a look at the final animations of the game boss just to get an idea of how many more sequences we can add so that our game can truly be brought to life and be entertaining. And then to end this lesson, we'll learn how to export all of our information out for our game engine. So here are all of the sequences for our game boss that we would use inside of Unity. Let's go ahead and play this back. So here's our rear up. And you can see here that I've added a bit of a head shake just to make this more intense. Also that the user playing this game can truly find these animations entertaining and find our game boss rather terrifying. And then here we go when we go ahead and play through to the next sequence you can see how he rears up for his roar. So I've added a bit of a tilt to the upper body just to that it truly feels like a roar. And then take a look at how he kind of looks down at the the player in a very terrifying way. Alright, great. So next, we can go into his attack, which is a run. And if I were to grab that global node and head over to the motion panel, we can go to our zero position controller and right-click on the weight parameter to bring this back to the origin. So you can see that the run cycle was actually created in place. So we would normally create a cycle for a game. If you'd like to learn more about how to create cycles, feel free to take a look at animating quadrupeds as well as animating walk cycles. Where we go through several techniques that you can keep in mind to not only create a convincing cycle, but to make sure that it loops seamlessly, things like that. Then we have an idle. Take a look at how many frames we have for our idle. Several frames here so we can have him breathe long enough so it looks like he's heavy, massive. And then from there we go into his fall. So just as we've animated already, there's a bit of a flail on the arms, a bit of an off-balance feeling. See how that leg kind of gets thrown out to the side and then he falls over. And then there's that bounce in the gaster. Now watch this. When we play this, you can see that there is a part of the animation where he gets up and he kind of crawls back to his starting point. The starting point is basically the pose that we use for our idol. So all I've done here was I've taken the, let's say, the last frame of the idol and I've cloned that over to the last frame of his getup. So we start right back at that pose. And that will cause the animation to blend nicely back to the idle. And then finally we have a few turns. Alright, sweet. So again, these are just a few ideas. You can also go in and add more if you'd like. If you find that you need, let's say, another transition or you would like to have another cycle, feel free to do so. It's really up to your imagination. Now, how do we export all of this information out? Well, first, let's make sure that we go back to our global node and we'll set our position controller back to a weight of 100% so that Unity has all of the information it needs when we export this out. Following that, we'll head over to our layer manager and we'll make sure to show the creature's skeleton. We'll also unfreeze the model. Now we can go in and grab everything we'd like to export out. We'll alt-click on our global node. No need to export that out because we already have a root bone in place. With everything selected here, we can now head over to our export selected option. Great. We can name this, let's say, game boss underscore animations. Now when we click on save, very important, we want to make sure that underneath our animation rollout that we have animation checked. We also want to go ahead and check bake animation under the bake animation rollout. We then set our range, so that's 0 to 475. Step means how many frames we'd like to bake out. So when we take a look at this value here of 1, that means every single frame would be baked. If this was set to 3, every third frame would be baked. So just to make sure we don't lose any information, we'll have step set to 1. Now, resemble all will make sure that all nodes native to 3ds Max will be baked out properly as well. 
And then another thing to check for is to make sure that your textures will be transferred in that FBX file that we save out. So if I were to go to Embed Media, we can make sure that that is on. So now we're ready to go ahead and click on OK and take a look. 3ds Max will go through and save all of that information into an FBX file that we can hand off to a programming artist for our game engine. Super cool stuff. Now keep in mind that it's also our job as animators to make sure that we create a list of the animation sequences. So if our idle goes from, let's say, frame 82 to 123, well, we should go ahead and note that in a file that we can give to our programming artist so that they can start to create clips inside of Unity with, let's say, Mechanim. It's very advanced animation engine. All right, great. Now we have a lot of data here, so it might take a little bit of time. Well, not too long. Notice everything has been saved out in that file. All right, sweet.